in seven boats. Three motor torpedo boats from World War II. <laughs> and it all led on from there. And I also like using second hand materials because they've got a bit of life in them already. Whereas you use new materials and they're a little bit dead. <laughs> well, they haven't lived. A lot of my inspiration comes from what I see. I know what shapes I've got a feeling, so I'll try and think what particular pieces would work and go from there. I was raised in a village just outside Gatwick Airport, Child. I was always not as good as other people in my class with a paintbrush. I was quite good at craft. When I finished my first, I did a degree course at Loughborough, I came out of that, and about the only proper job I ever got was when I was in my 20s. I ended up in Fiji, spent a bit of time on boats there. I learnt, taught myself a bit carpentry while I was doing it. I was just going around doing like, small building projects and yeah, helped me build, just supply materials and what have you. Taught me a bit and I taught them a bit, so it was all good fun. When I finished there, I went travelling around the Pacific, ended up in New Caledonia where a mate of mine was working in fisheries. He was working in development stuff, so he came up with a design for a kit built boat for the local fishermen to make, and he wanted to try it out, so I built a boat for him in his garage. Fascinated with boats ever since. I moved to Shoreham in 1986. So I've lived here for uh, 31 years, I mate. I think Shoreham's a very lovely place. It was, it's got lots of history. It's got a river which Brighton hasn't got all worthy. I went to Art College in 1997, Northbrook, and I went to their 3D department, which was great fun, and whilst I was there, came up with several novel ideas. Figured out you could actually create a square and a circle out of a 3D object, but you have to look at it from a particular point of view. And here we have a, uh, a square and a circle. Okay, so that should be fairly circular, and that should be fairly square. That is a, a squircle. I came out of college with the knowledge that I could patent this idea or I could copyright it, but then it's just bits of paper. I thought the best, best way of copywriting a squircle was to build it. The boat we're sitting on at the moment is Ferda. Ferda's the boat I live on. Ferda was a sunken wreck when I came out of college in 2000. It took eight months to get her floating. She's an old Portsmouth ferry, built in 1929. She'd been sunk for seven, eight years. It spent eight months, I think, digging her up, getting rid of all the mud inside her and welding panels on the outside of her. And finally, we got her floating. Brought her over from about half a mile away on the other side of the river, back to this mooring here. Once we got her floating, we could just start doing design work. The space seemed to suggest her. Split level lounge in the stern. And then it was getting a couple of squircles, and after that, it was just a case of working out the rest of the space and how to fill it up. A bus or a coach or anything that sort of size. I got all the windows and everything else for 200 quid. They leak like sieves and they or black gunk all over the place, but hey, you can't have everything. Well, the most interesting part of this boat, I reckon, is the, well, I don't know, the squircles are quite fun, but the uh, 
found materials of the wings. It's right about half a ton apiece, and I've got absolutely no record of how I got them up there at all. Venture, which was my first boat, which I started lived on in 1986. I've got some reliant rubbing from the scrapyard where I also got the coach, the fire engine, and they all came from the same place in the good old days when they didn't have quite so much health and safety. Dodged the only boat I've got which I named myself, which I came up with a name for and named after the fire engine make on the side of it. And that's a holiday accommodation. When I was a kid we had Tonka toys. I bet do you remember Tonka toys? You might do. There you go, Tonka toys had great big wheels, so we got got some tractor tires. Fun bed. Oh, that's all a bit of fun, and you can wake up in this beautiful old lifeboat. So there's several boats in this particular vessel. Here's another one. And this is a boat as well. All the partitions made there. All the old stuff, you see, there's a bathroom in there and uh, bits and pieces. There you go, Frisbee's bench. I work for Hamish. I've been here since last October and I'm working here because I want to learn about carpentry and general boat making. So the work is generally different every week. As you can tell, I've been working a lot with paint and red oxide in the last week. Um, but other than that, I've done Insulation, a bit of carpentry, uh, working with sealants, working with glues and stuff like that. I work with Hamish is, yeah, very laid back, I kind of choose my own hours. I'm not on a particular schedule, so it's very easy going. But at the same time, I'm doing stuff I've never done before. Yeah, it's like a learning process for a relaxed one. This is a tricycle, and so there you go. Not sure about the uh, sunken wreck, which is currently the Opinio, which is sitting out there. It's got three tricycles on it, which are the main reason why I haven't completely abandoned that project because I don't want to waste all the bloody energy I put into building those tricycles. Well, I aim to get a floating later on this year. This is the pin turkle, as in five sided. That's on the back of the Heron, and a very pretty roof it is, even if it is a derelict boat. Hey, one day I'll get them floating. So Hamish built this boat, spent a lot of time and effort on it, partly to celebrate the success of building a boat. He took it out to sea, fitted it with a big sea engine, and then he brought it back in, um, you know, triumphant on his ocean voyage, and basically, what I think is he didn't basically support the boat enough when it docked. It's mud flat, so you have to support the hull, and basically the hull snapped in half. So letting water in, breaking the whole boat. I think he's not come back to it because of a lot of time and energy and probably stress that he just sees in this boat wasted. Clive, which is the workshop. That's making a window at the moment, so that's a, a window which is going on the front of Verda. And uh, it's eight 
time-consuming job. <laughs> but it should look very pretty. Got good neighbours. Yeah, I know our own moorings down here, which makes them particularly desirable as far as boat dwellers go. Most boat dwellers have uh, limited freedom to do what they want with their boats but because we own land we don't have to obey any rules. We've got very little restrictions so it gives us a great deal of freedom to design and live how we want to. There's certainly plenty of navigable rivers which aren't currently used for anything very much at all. I think it would be delightful if more people could live on houseboats.